hello welcome back we are here thank you guys so much for watching my black gymnastics journey here in canada we are now in 2007 and from the last video my body is not holding up as much as it it, it could in the past I, i'm really in those prime years and um obviously the relationship with my coach is getting worse and worse and worse it seems as though I might be at a breaking point and we know that my ultimate goal was the Olympics the 2008 Olympics because that's what I'm really gearing up for and in my prime that's really what I should be getting to I mean in 2006 I was top five in the country so as we're moving forward things are are looking pretty great for me to make that olympic team so i thought uh, but as 2007 hit um it wasn't going in the direction that i i really wanted it to go and now i'm really having uh, a mental struggle with myself and my struggle is that i know i can but with all of this mental capacity being so heavy on me, I'm simply not able to. Uh, two, two main things that I want to talk about in this video. If you are with a coach, if you are with a parent, if you are with a teacher, if you are with any type of mentor and they have never asked what your goal is, that's a big, big red flag. That's a huge red flag and you should probably be working with someone else. My entire years, I spent about five years at Gemini Gymnastics with Elena, and she never once asked me what my goal was. Um, me knowing my goal was the Olympics, um, that was not something she ever asked me. So that means we were never really on that same page. In fact, as I told you in, in a few prior videos, she was trying to get me to go into the national open stream which is not the high performance stream and not the stream that is able to actually qualify for the olympics so in her mind she knew that that would never be an option and she actually wanted me to go on the lower end of things but i pushed for the high performance stream i am still a carded athlete i'm still getting drug tested randomly but just the struggles. So the fact that she never once asked me what my actual goals were, um, to her, everything seemed like it was great because she didn't even think I could go in this direction. And the fact that it went in that direction and I'm doing pretty good, to her, I've exceeded the goals. And with that, we already have a misunderstanding getting rougher gymnastics is an extremely challenging sport we all know this everyone watches the olympics how great gymnastics is we know this already i know um now try to do gymnastics when your mind body soul is not up to the ability that you know it can be now it becomes extremely dangerous one scary story this is during 2007 where my body is feeling heavier skills are not coming like how they should and my coach is being proven right elite canada is a competition that happens maybe three or four months before the nationals but it's what helps qualify you to the nationals so i'm at elite canada and i'm doing this dismount off beam which is round off double back off the beam and in 2007 I've entered an even more soulless Britney you know 2003 I was kind of there 2004 you know I'm showing up 2006 really my prime years um, I was still I was still somewhat there 2007 was completely different I was no longer even in my body and this is so freaking dangerous that I am doing a sport at such a high level but my mind is not there my soul is not there it's just it's sheer talent and the grace of God keeping me alive because I don't I'm not even aware of what's happening so I'm on beam and you get a two-minute warm-up or something like this and I'm on the beam and I'm doing my warm-up and when your mind is not there you're not able to think fast so I, I go for my dismount and one of my feet is a four inch wide beam. You have to keep your feet like this on the beam so that you can stay on the beam because like this you'll fall off. So your feet are like this into your dismount. One of my feet missed the beam and 
my mind's not there. I still go for my double back. Very not smart. What, what I should have done was just try to do a back tuck or try to land safe. But again, I missed one foot. I do the double back, but I don't have enough power because I didn't take off of two feet. I took off of one, one slipped. So not only was it a one foot punch, one slip. So half the body's going down, but I'm still trying to do a double salto in the air off of the beam. I obviously don't have enough height. <laughs> don't have enough power. I don't have enough rotation. Um, I end up doing a flip and a half. I land on my neck. Um, and I'm embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. And I just, I get up. I get up. I try to breathe. <gasps> <gasps> breathing hurts um i must have broke a sternum or something in here because it, it hurt to breathe i couldn't really move my my neck and this whole area here had just collapsed on top of each other um this was during the warm-up i still needed to compete um and when i made that really big fall my coach didn't really seem to care the only thing she said was, Brittany, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Nothing else. Nothing else at all. That, that was all I got from her. And, and my response was, um, I think my foot, my, my foot slipped off the beam. The danger of, of doing gymnastics when your mind, body, and soul is not a part of you. And I talk about regretting my national years of gymnastics. I talk about regretting it because I was never fully there. And 2007 was a prime example of that because that injury could have ended my life, actually. It could have and should have ended my life. But as I have no confidence, I had no confidence. I'm, I wasn't going to complain. I wasn't going to ruffle any feathers because, you know, already being the only black gymnast that was big enough within itself i shook it out and i competed i competed all four events and it was when i went back to the gym where i i really had to take some time off because i couldn't breathe properly i i, I couldn't move the pain was excruciating then most people would ask well did you get checked did you get any x-rays did you get any of these things after my cancer scare my parents were completely against uh, doctors and um, CAT scans and x-rays and all of that uh, and going through my body. They were not okay with it. So anytime I needed to get some kind of scan or x-ray, it was not something that I was able to get. So I didn't get it checked. We don't know what was happening in there, but I did take some substantial time off of uh gymnastics i remember i was only able to like do stretching i was only able to do some conditioning but it was excruciating pain again this should have ended my career a few months later nationals is coming up and i have to show for national Brittany is not allowed to miss nationals other white teammates are allowed to miss it and still be on the team i would not be allowed to do that so I, I go to the competition. I, I'm not having a very good day, at least I don't think. I mean, during this um, nationals, there was NCAA coaches that were coming out to watch, to do some recruiting. I had absolutely no intention of doing NCAA gymnastics. I had my goals to go to the Olympics. And if I was not gonna be going to the Olympics, I didn't want anything else and there was all these NCAA coaches there that were really fond of what they saw they saw potential in me they saw something that my coach obviously didn't see they saw a lot of room for growth and a lot of room for potential unlike other athletes and gymnasts i was not sending out recruiting tapes and videos and contacting schools i was not doing any of that because i didn't have the intention of going to um, college for gymnastics 
After this nationals, I had several pretty large universities reach out to me, including the University of Nebraska. I had U the University of Utah. I had LSU. I had Michigan. I had a few different D1 schools reaching out to me saying they really wanted me. They were ready to send me there for free for these visits and this and that. And I was absolutely not even interested, not even in the least. And um, my parents uh, said, I hear where you're coming from because it was a nonverbal thing that they knew I didn't want to go. I didn't talk to them, but they said, check out the schools and just give it a try. If you, if you don't like them, you are welcome to come back home. They knew I would never complain. I think they knew this low key that I wouldn't be complaining about how much I, I didn't want to do it. But I ended up after that nationals right away, I ended up going to Nebraska and I also ended up going to Utah and Utah at this point was one of the highest ranked NCAA gyms. It won some, coming second and third in the nation. They were a very strong team. And when I went there, and I was pretty excited. It, it was a overwhelming feeling to see everything they were offering me. Their entire team was blonde hair and blue eyes. And that didn't sit too well with me. And I did, I brought it up to them. I said, there's not really much diversity or culture on this team. And they pointed me in the direction to a Caucasian girl with tan skin and said, um, no, no, she's, um, she's black. She's black. Maybe she was had a little bit of Mexican in her. I'm not sure. She's like, you guys are like the same. So yeah, we do have diversity here. Look at her skin color. You guys have the same skin color. I said, I'll think about it. <laughs> and then I went to the University of Nebraska and uh, they had two black girls, an Asian girl, a Mexican. And it was quite frankly, the most diverse team, in my opinion, in the NCAA's D1 division that I'd ever seen. And that within itself, on top of the food because they had some bomb food there. I love food. So food, it was a great thing. <laughs> they took me to their, uh, it was a great thing. They took me to their student athlete cafeteria. The student athletes at Nebraska have their own private cafeteria where they make grill everything for you from scratch. I fell in love with the food. And then on top of it, the diversity. And then plus Dan Kendig saw something in me that my coach didn't see. And that was it. My, my journey to Nebraska, accepting my journey to Nebraska happened within, within a month, within a month. Now, that being said, I had no communication with my coach at all, Yelena. She didn't even know about these recruiting trips because she was not even in the gym coaching me anymore. She was traveling the world with all of her younger athletes, uh, you know, she has a new up and coming Christina Vakulik. She has Kelsey still there a little bit. So all of her energy and time, she's traveling and spending time with them. So she has no idea or whereabouts or care about what's happening with me and which direction I want to go. If I want a scholarship, if I'm ending gymnastics, all of these things were not even in her, her thoughts because she simply didn't care. And so within that turnaround time I was training one day a Friday and that Monday just that quick where I was supposed to be back to the gym I was on a plane to Nebraska and of course with Valeri he was very disappointed and shocked you know Britunchik. he gave me a nickname very sad at the way that I was leaving there was no notice there was no anything. There was there was nothing. There was no communication. Uh, and I know that that bothered him. And I did feel bad because I know that day he, he sat with me for a while and we talked and we sat and we talked. And um, I knew he was happy for me, but I also knew he was disappointed because he, he loved training me and having me in that gym. But Yelena could not care. And when she came back from her trip with her other favorite athletes, I was no longer in the gym. So even the way that we left, 
we didn't even leave with a, a sense of a, a goodbye or a sense of a anything at all, which I feel made our, our relationship, at least for me, not complete. There was a lot of unfinished business in there because of the way that I did leave. So that was very heavy and I had to live with that going into college gymnastics. I'm going to end it here. Tune back in next week for some more details. Almost had a life-threatening injury to end my career. Coach did nev never did speak to me about my goals and the direction that I wanted to go with, the, with gymnastics. I had NCAA coaches, D1 schools approaching me, asking me, begging me to come to their schools and I accepted a full scholarship to the University of Nebraska. Thank you guys so much and talk with you soon.